morning and welcome to the Yarn Waffle podcast. Uh, my name is Liz Ward, I'm a crochet designer living in York in the UK with my two Bengal cats, Puka, Puka and Cal who may well make an appearance in a bit. Um, this is the first episode of the new year, it is now January 2021, um, it is the 16th today. Yeah. I meant to film this a bit earlier but good intentions and all that. Uh, yeah so the first episode of um, the year I like to do an all my whips episode and that's what this is so it's not a normal um, finished objects words in progress blah blah um, it is a um, me digging out everything that I'm currently working on or have hidden away and I'm not working on at the moment um, and putting them all together and seeing what I've got so that I can one clear the decks see what needs finishing and get it done and two, cast on many, 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 many more things. What have you found, Pooks? Okay, so it could be a bit of a long episode. I've got this tub, which is current works in progress. Uh, this tub, which is things that I'm working on, but I've put to one side. Um, technically, I think that goes in there. And this tub, I think, is the things that I'm not working on and the things that are slightly hidden. If there is any shaking of the camera or uh, rummaging noises, that is usually the cats. I apologise, but it's what makes this podcast fun. Um, you may also notice we've got a little bit of a different layout today. Um, I've had a bit of a change around in here. Um, so my stash is now behind me and I also have the yarn cake sheep that I got for Christmas from my mum, which is lovely. Um, so yeah, it's just a bit of a different layout to try and um, get things working in here. But I like it, I hope you like it. Um, let me know. Um, but yeah, I'm going to crack on and we're just going to go um, through everything I am currently working on. Um, yeah, so we're starting off in my Bloof Hunter bag and this is a bag of my yarnistry. And, um, one thing I did not prepare is some sock blockers. We definitely need sock blockers. So these socks are nearly finished. In fact, they would be finished if I hadn't have got distracted by a new cast on. I am taking part this year in the Rainbow Sock Chronicles, which is where you knit a pair of socks every month in the colour of the month. January's colour is pink and so this is my January sock. Um, I think you also get another entry if you use the Lay Family Yarn or So Sweet Violet patterns because they are the two people running it. This is a So Sweet Violet pattern. Gosh, I'm not used to holding the things at the camera here. Um, this is the Winter Bird socks which I had in my library um, and it uses slip stitches to create these little V stitches which look like winter birds and they're just ever so lovely. It's a toe up sock and it is knit with a um, increases so it's, it's like a heel flap and gusset but it's not exactly. It's worked really nicely. Um, I did stall when I got to this section because I'd never done this before but actually the pattern is so straightforward and so easy. I really enjoyed it. So yeah the second one is on the needles. I have done the heel. Sorry about the banging. Um, I only have two more pattern repeats and the rib and this is finished. So hopefully on the next episode this will be a finished object. But yeah, we need to be keeping a tally somewhere of how many socks I've got on the needles. I need a little blackboard. Luca, what are you doing, love? Okay, work in progress number two. And can you believe it? It's actually some crochet. This was my distraction yesterday. I was supposed to be finishing these socks and I thought. I feel like just doing a bit of a granny square. Well, I did a few granny squares. I think I've done about 30 so far. These use, um, these are just your um, classic granny square. I do do them slightly differently. Um, I rotate the work as I'm doing it so that they are perfectly symmetrical. I also um, crochet in any ends as I'm going. Um, but yeah, I'm using a 3.75 hook with these. Um, and I'm just using five gram scraps. So just using up my scraps yet again. 
Oh, I just realised I haven't brought up my mitered square blanket. But that is one of my whips too. So yeah, I do a square a day mitered square blanket, which I haven't brought up with me, but I showed it on last episode and I show it all the time. Um, so every morning I knit a square that usually takes about 30 to 40 minutes. Um, and I did, I did wonder about starting a crochet one so that when I finish my knit square, I crochet a square. Just because this year I feel like, I mean, I am a crochet designer. It is my job and I haven't been really doing much hobby crochet this year so this year I want to make a change with that and I want to get back into just enjoying crochet more and it not necessarily being such a task to do so yeah I'm hoping this might be the answer so I decided to do one square a day I mean I literally started this yesterday um yeah it's safe to say that I got slightly the crochet mojo came back in a bit of a flood, shall we say. Because I made one of these and I just could not stop. And it was all I wanted to work on yesterday. And it's all I've wanted to work on today. I've, I did my knit square this morning. And um, then I did six crochet squares. So, yeah. Plan is to border these. Um, and then join them all together. What I haven't decided is whether to go... Um, light around the border or dark so if you have any preference on that please do leave me a comment either light or dark um and majority rules so we shall go with that for joining them together i also want to try a few different ways of joining them together because i'm a little bit fussy with stuff like that um i think that's one of my problems with crochet because it is my job and i get into the technical side of it quite a lot I can be quite fussy about certain stitches and things and seeing certain things so joining squares together it's gonna to be interesting but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it but yes there is actually some crochet on the hook at the moment I should leave that there right digging back in I'll go for socks again oh, okay it is a bit of a jumble in here because um, Puka just kind of dived into it as I was trying to pack it away. So, mm, should be quite interesting. Yeah, so the next work in progress is another very nearly finished one. This is a self-striping sock. Um, this yarn I got off an eBay D-stash and it didn't have any dyer details on it. So I have no idea who dyed this up, but it is very beautiful. It's almost a tonal and it's um, a two stripe self striping but it's yeah tonal variegated with some lovely little speckles in there and I decided to um, just do no contrast on this one just use the um, yarn all the way up and I am very close to finishing the second one of these one of um, da -da 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 -da, words in the wrong order yeah, I always try and have a vanilla sock on the needles. It's one of the easiest things just to pick up if I just feel like knitting while I'm watching telly. So nearly always there's a vanilla sock on the needles. This, this one. Although at the moment we are currently in a national lockdown situation. So it is literally just me and the cats here at the moment. Um, I have Richard who's my bubble human who gets to come around every Sunday but I don't get to see anybody else. So there's been quite a lot of sitting and knitting. This, I am officially in a tangle. So I cast on a garter stitch shawl. This hasn't been shown on the podcast. It's quite new on the needles. Um, it is a zero waste shawl. I will put the pattern details on the screen. If I can show it. I had a skein of this yarn. Ooh, 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 da, 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 da. This yarn here, which as you can see is lovely and bright, is the Silver Linings colorway by Siobhan's Craft. It's like a half and half neon rainbow and this lovely silver grey. Um, and yeah, I needed something cheery so I cast this on. I was going to make a hitch hiker, which just uses 100 grams, but I, for some reason I couldn't find that pattern in my library. And I had this one in there as well, which is the Zero Waste. So it has a very similar sort of edge to the hitchhiker um, but what this one does is it stripes in other colours 
I wasn't going to stripe in other colours, but then as I got to the end, I didn't want to um, didn't want to stop knitting on it, to be perfectly honest. So I started striping in this charcoal rainbow, which is also from Siobhan's Craft. That's nearly finished, but I do also have Riot by Siobhan's Craft, which is just a neon rainbow. So when I ran out of the silver linings, I started striping in the Riot to keep on going. And when I have finished the charcoal rainbow, it will just be plain neon on the end. So yeah, it's going to be a riot of colour and it's just going to be fun. And it is just a joy to knit because it is all garter. There is pretty much nothing you have to think about apart from a few increases on the ends. So yeah, that's my zero waste shawl. There's no time limit on when or when that gets finished. It's just a picky up. When I'm in the mood for it type of shawl. Okay, what's in here? This was another Christmas present from me. I'm so good to myself. Um, I got myself a luxury Christmas box from Dye Candy. Dye Candy. Uh, Dye Candy is a yarn dyer that I really enjoy her colourways. Um, so I got um, a yeah, the Christmas box that she offered, which had two skeins of a, an exclusive colourway. Um, I think I can show you that colourway. Oh, it's lost its ball band, but yeah, this was the colourway. Um, so there's two skeins of this. And as I say, I think it, it's mainly referring to 2020 with the title, which I won't say out loud for delicate ears that may be watching, but I think we could all agree with that statement. So yeah, um, completely going off track to topic already. That was my dye candy yarn. Oh, it's nice having the stash behind me. But yeah, in this bag, do bears knit in the woods, um, I have another sock, and another finished sock. So where's my... my... I'll shut up during this bit. Well, these ones are going miles off the end of the... Um... No. Do you know when words just... out your brain? Sock blocker. This is a new pattern by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. It is the Winter Solstice pattern from her new Christmas collection. And this yarn is the Winter Solstice yarn from Yarn Badger. It is absolutely beautiful. It's got like a bamboo blend in the base. So it's got this lovely sheen, which the stitch definition on it is just absolutely incredible. I am doing contrast heels and toes with one of the minis that was in my advent calendar from Ducky Darlings. I think it goes really well with it. Um, yeah, it's just this simple lace and I think twisted stitches pattern. No, I, no, it's just lace. Um, and it just, I think, works really well with the self-striping yarn. So yeah, I have one done. You can sort of sense a theme with how I work socks. I knit one, I cast the second one on, and then I start knitting a completely different sock. Uh, the second one is cast on, it is just about three quarters through the ribbing. That will be continued very soon, mainly because it's just a joy to work on. I just want to get those winter bird socks, the first ones I showed finished, because they do have a deadline of being finished by the end of the month. Because therefore I make along. Okay, what next? There is actually some more crochet. It is cold. It is winter. And um, I have wooden floors in my bedroom and laminate floors in the kitchen and bathroom, which get very cold. So I wanted some house slippers and I thought crochet would be the best way to make them. I'm fondling this because it's got mohair in it. this little bit of lime fluffy loveliness and this which is very loose because I've been using it from the inside and outside 
This is a Surdar yarn. I don't think I have a ball band for it. If I find out the information, I'll put it on the screen. Um, it's just, it's an acrylic, but it's really soft, but it's really hard wearing. So, um, yeah, I decided to just sort of make up a pattern for these. So, um, I have done crochet sock patterns before. Um, I wanted something that was quite oversized. Um, and so what I did is I started down here and then I increased till the width I wanted. Um, and then I knit to the length of where I would normally put in a heel or an afterthought heel or yeah um, and then I split the sock and knit up the top and I finished with this lovely crab stitch border I don't know if you can see that it sort of rolls over the top it's really pretty um, and then I went back in and did this no yeah I did the heel I'm really pleased with this heel it's not one that I've tried before um, it was completely made up but um it's just where i lined the decreases gave it this really nice shape so yeah i this ended up just being a little bit too too big though only because i worry about falling down the stairs with two slip two big slippers um so this i'm gonna i'm gonna pull this out and remake it and make a pair that fit properly and then hopefully I will write this up as a free pattern because I think it's really nice and hopefully do film some film some tutorials if I get around to doing any filming okay what else is in here okay there is some finished things in there while we're away from knitting I will show you my cross stitch um, I don't do a lot of cross stitch, um, I have done in the past, but this is one that I picked up during the second lockdown to do. It is by... No, I can never remember because it sounds like an adult toy shop. It's something like Wild Velvet Pony or something on Etsy. I'll put the details on the screen. She's got amazing um, cross stitch designs. Um, and this is the one that I'm working on at the moment. It is actually a raven, so the bird will continue this way. Um, and it's made up of sort of geometric shapes, and it's really pretty. So yeah, I've bought another one in this range, which is a hummingbird as well. So when I've got this one finished, I will do that one. There's no as and when I work on that. The only thing is, I do need glasses when I work on it. It's too small for me to see now. My eyes are getting old. Okay. Um, there are, yeah, there are a couple of finished objects in there. This is another sock that sort of didn't get any further from the last time I showed it on the podcast. It is the Morning Coffee Socks by Kay Linton, who is a crazy sock lady. Um, I haven't really touched this up. I haven't really touched this since before Christmas. It is Christmas yarn. It's by um, Amy of Stranded Dye Works. It's the Christmas It's Cancelled colourway. Um, it's lovely. Um, it takes more concentration than I have at the moment for a Christmas sock. Puka, what are you doing? Where are you for a start? Come here. Just tidy up a little bit. Um, finally in this bag, this is in the the current whips, there is a mask, sign of the times. Uh, in here there are two pairs of socks which are basically finished apart from the fact that they need their heels putting in. This pair has been finished for a while, these are my opposites attract pattern so it's just a vanilla tube sock but it's made with minis that are um, striped together in a really nice way using helical knitting and this again is going to be a free pattern with tutorials when I get around to filming it. This is also why they don't have heels yet because I need to film putting them in. And then I cast on a second pair. These are um, also 
for a minute that I thought one was longer than the other. Um, these are also using 10 gram, 10 minigrams, no, 10, 10 gram mini skeins. Um, I tend to get the packs that Siobhan's Craft does because she does amazing ones. And um, this is her dinosaur set, this was her Opposites Attract set. This pair I cast on to do the tutorials as I was going and I have filmed none of them. So I am going to cast on another, hang on, one more. Sorry about the rattling, Puka has found something. Oh, it's a, it's a pen. So yeah, I'm going to cast on a third one of these and use the third one for doing the tutorials. This is the honeycomb mini set and you get 10 in there and this one will be quite similar to this in the fact that it will be a fade which I think because this one just shows that you can really use any minis but the when they fade together they look amazing. So yeah there will be a third one of these and I will do the tutorials and yeah, just, just shout at me if I don't do it anytime soon because, um, oh, there's sweets in here. You know, we're on a national lockdown. I really should be getting into gear and getting these things done. I have time at home. I should be doing things. And that is what I am currently working on. Apart from there is one other thing that's currently being worked on just before my mum starts shouting at the camera. This is in a really nice new bag as well. This is from Woolly Mama um, and it was another gift from Mum for Christmas. And in here is Mum's Harvest Cardigan. Let me move Granny Squares. Pooks! The rattling is Pooka playing with the Sharpie. I'll, do, I'll just put it here. Pooka! Just put, just put it there. Just put it there. Yeah. So in here, very much squished in here, is Mum's Harvest Cardigan. If you've seen this podcast before, you know I nearly always wear a Harvest Cardigan that I made for myself. And I mild together... Um, a light grey yarn and scraps and I've done the same with this one. I talked more about it on the last episode of the podcast but it's a bit further along now. I have finished the body and I have nearly finished the sleeve. Well, two thirds maybe? But yeah, I'm for this I'm holding together Drops Flora in this lovely sort of denim blue colour and just scraps and I am weaving in my ends. Um, so, sorry, knitting in my ends as I go. This is going to be absolutely lovely when it's finished and it won't be long before it is. Here, that's the Harvest Cardigan. Okay, so now we're going to go into whips. Oh, there's only two bags in here. That doesn't seem too bad. What is in here? Oh, this isn't a whip. That, I mean, to be fair, this is another bag by the Woolly, sorry, the Woolly Tangle, same person who did the previous bag. This is my hummingbird one. This does not have a whip in it. Uh, this has yarn for my junction sweater, which is a pattern by Andrea Murray. I'll put the details in on the screen. I am going to be making it in black. Uh, this is the Drops Nord, which is um, an alpaca blend, so it's really soft. And I'm going to be using a Zalba ball for the colour work and the brioche. I, am, I have that pattern that's ready to cast on. But I'm not casting it on until I've got one of the two sweaters that I have on the needles at the moment off. I am also got another sweater that I want to cast on. But again, same rules apply. Um... You notice that Puka stopped playing with it as soon as I started playing with it? She's very much at that teenager age where it's not fun if mum wants to play with it. 
Okay, but yeah, this is the other sweater in this bag. This is um, a bag I made. It's one of the Cassie bags. Um, and this is the vintage style sweater that I am making for Andrea, who I work with. Let's try not to lose any neat, any stitches. This is slow progress, uh, but it is um, for all over colour work. And I am making it up as I go along. And that is the colour work chart. I am combining two patterns. I'm using the Edna pattern details and um, a vintage pattern that I had. And I am combining those. So hopefully it's going to involve steaks. Um, but yeah, I'm sort of getting to the point where I'm heading towards the underarms now. And that will start involving steaks. And I have lost stitches. I thought I was going to lose stitches. No, but yeah, this is um, one full repeat of the colour work. But I won't go into that too much. Um, I'll talk about that next time I have it on the podcast. When, hopefully, we will have started the steaks. Oh no. Puka, please don't do that. Uh, yes, yeah, so that is one of... That is two tubs empty. So there, actually there's only two projects in that, so I don't feel too bad. What is in here? This is another Cassie bag. Oh, okay. I think this is getting frogged. I, don't, I really don't know. This is a pattern by Winwick Mum. It's I think it was called Paper Chains or something like that. It was a free pattern that came with the year before last West Yorkshire Spinners Christmas colourway. Um, it has this sort of like it looks like a paper chain sort of knotted together down the middle. Um, I've only got this far, and I do. The thing is. One, I don't think it's Christmassy enough, but does that really matter? I don't know. I, I was I had it in my head that these were definitely getting frogged, but now I'm looking at them thinking they're going to fit really nicely. And they're all really... I mean, you see that cable design? This yarn is by the Fiber Fox. It's absolutely beautiful. It's like pinks and olive greens. It is... I think that... I don't like how it's pulled here. But I don't mind the fact that it's striping on the sock. I think that's quite pretty. Do I frog these or don't I? Just, just bear with one mo. Um, Puka. Why have you opened that drawer and are playing with all the trimmings? She seems to be obsessed with what's in these drawers. Uh, all that has been taken out by her. Puka? What are you doing? Oh yeah, there's no way I'm going to get this camera to go back into the right from the same place. Now. Right, sorry about that. Sorry if it's a weird angle now because I've had to move it. Um, but yeah, I'm back. So I'm undecided about this one. Um, so if you have very strong opinions, give me a shout in the comments and say frog it or finish it. And again, majority rules wins. I will bow to your greater knowledge and judgment. And um, yeah. So, you're currently voted on dark or light for the crochet blanket or frog it or finish it for the paper chain socks. And in here, this is one of my favourite little bags, one of the first ones I ever got. Um, oh, okay. This is the kitten moon mitts. And I have one of these finished and the second one is not started. Um, there are no needles in here. 
and the second one has not been cast on. So Cardinal Sin, always cast on the second one, otherwise it doesn't get started. So yeah, these definitely need to get into the um, sort out shortly pile. But really enjoyable pattern. Again, I'll put all the details on the screen. Um, and that was gifted to me by you, a lovely rose, Rosie. Um, thank you, Rosie. I will finish those soon. Okay. What else have we got? Another big bag. Ooh. Oh dear, this looks like it's going to come out as a tangle. Hopefully not. Okay. Um, right, this is my Fading Point shawl, which is knit in the Good Life collection by Ducky Darlings, and I haven't touched this for a good while. Hey Pooks! Uh, yeah, I only literally have this bit to finish off, which would probably be take a couple of afternoons. Um, yeah. This needs to be finished. So I'm not going to put this in the hibernating box, it's going to come out and be finished. One, because when I finish it I can use the leftovers of the yarns for other bits because there's quite quite a lot of these left over and they're such beautiful yarns. Um, and they can go in my mitered square blanket. Right. Okay, there's not, there's not a scary amount of stuff in here. There is a razor in here. Oh, does anyone else use razors for gleaning stuff? They're really good. What is in here? Oh, I forgot I was even making these. Uh, these are the Dreaming of Paris socks by Hokey Locatelli. Um, I have one finished. They are knit in a um, Cascade Heritage in the grey and a yarn I dyed, which is this one, which has got a really silky base. It's really lovely. Um, how far am I on the second one? So. It looks like I'm about halfway. It looks like I stopped before I needed to do that heel turn. So yeah, these definitely need to come out and get finished because once I get that heel turn, that then, because this is, it is two, co two colours, but you're helical knitting, so it's just like doing vanilla knitting. So once I've turned this heel, this could actually be my uh, vanilla sock knitting because I'm going to finish those other ones really soon. So yeah, I need to spend a few minutes turning the heel on this and then oh who could just jump to where she shouldn't uh yeah so heel on those needs to be done Is somebody right making me a list because I've, I've definitely lost count of how many socks i've got on the needles and i've lost also lost count of all the things i'm going to do right away you know what I'm going to do right away, don't you? You know I'm going to cast on something new. Um, I always do this when it's an all my whips thing. I'm always like, oh, I've shown them all now. Better cast on something new. What is in here? Ooh. Okay. So this is not actually a whip. This is another, this is ready for a new cast on. And this is another set of minis, like those ones that I just showed you from Siobhan's Crafts. But this is her autumn set. I don't really want to have to get all these out but I don't know what you can see in there because these are going to tangle like mad if I do. Um, I have a feeling I was going to do the same thing so this was to make another version of those socks. I might make it use it for something else. It would make a really nice litmus shawl although I've got another plan for a litmus shawl using this yarn here and um, some other minis from Siobhan's Craft because I got one of her 12 days of Christmas and yes so that actually is not a whip it is a a possible project but I like the fact that it's all balled up ready to go Ooh, 
I could make some... No, it's gone out of my head. But yeah, it probably will be socks. It might not be those socks that I'm writing the pattern for because otherwise I'm going to end up with like three pairs all the same. Uh, what else is in here? There's only two more project bags in here. Oh, that was the, the pattern. Oh, I'm actually glad the pattern's in here. Oh, it was called the Christmas Robin Socks, was that um, Paper Chains one by Win Whit Mum. I think we'll stick with Paper Chains so I actually remember it. So I have Halloween socks in this little bag. And did I finish one of these? I did finish one of these. There is definitely a theme when it comes to the way I work my socks. This was also a pattern. I made this up. Um, and I really like it. Um, I think I just stopped working on these because um, it stopped being Halloween. Also, really bright neon. Don't we just love it? Yeah, so this is another pattern that I was working on. I really like it. Uh, so it's laced down the front and stocking, um, stocking stitch down the back. I'm stumbling over words now. I've been talking for quite a while. Um, yeah. How far had I got with the second sock? Oh, not far. I think I probably only just did the toe. Don't even think the toe is finished on those. So yeah, I'm not saying I'm going to jump to working on these right away, but I know they're there and I definitely will get to them. Definitely before next Halloween. And yeah, this, this little sock bag is by the little grey girl, she's Gemma. And then finally, in this bag, uh, oh gosh, who was it by? I thought I kept the tag in. No. Uh, there is another finished sock. Uh, this is yarn by... Um, Amy of Stranded Dye Works, it's her industrial Kingfisher colourway. It is quite an old yarn, this one. It's one I got on a D-stash, I think it's an MCN. Um, so I don't know if this colourway has changed slightly since then. Um, I know she was selling it recently with like quite a, a sort of Kingfisher blue colour. Um, so yeah, this looks slightly duller than the, the newer version that she's been doing. But this is the... Shell, co Shell Cottage pattern, which is part of the Harry Potter collection by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. And it has this panel that goes down one side, but not the other. And then that flips over on the other sock. I have not got very far with the other sock at all. May have been on the needles for quite some time. Okay. However, I think that is it. I think that is all the whips in progress at the moment which really I'm fine with I honestly thought there was more I mean technically there are things like oh, hang on the sort of like obligation knitting like this is my pattern um this is a dimension socks pattern and I really want to release this as a pair of mitts as well so that's kind of obligation knitting that's in my head but it hasn't been started and they're I'm fairly sure there are like socks that are only like one socks like this sock this is only one sock and um i do have the yarn to finish it but it's not even a, in a project bag or a thought because i didn't particularly enjoy knitting this sock and it doesn't really fit so i don't think the second one is ever going to get knit But yeah, so I'm not really counting that as a whip. It may be a unfinished object. That sock also doesn't have a partner. This is self-striping yarn. I died up um, ages ago. Don't think I have any more of this left, so I don't think it's ever going to get a partner. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. That's not too bad. That's, that's not too bad at all. There's nothing that's yeah so I don't feel like I'm sitting on anything that's 
never ever ever gonna get finished or that I have so many whips even if I just worked on whips it wouldn't last me you know it would last me this year worth of knitting that's not the case um to be fair I could probably I mean we're in lockdown at the minute and I am taking part in the lockdown sock down maybe I should see how many of these socks I can finish that would be quite fun uh yeah I think I'll do that I think I'll see how many of these socks I can finish before I cast on any more new socks um and I think that's probably going to be it for today's episode um you right pooks why don't probably going to be it for today's episode I state it's not a normal podcast today this isn't all my whips episode I do them once every year um and I will be back hopefully next week with a regular episode and we'll see how many pairs of socks I've got through